the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire by a prophet the lord brought israel out and by a prophet he was preserved amen the ministry of a prophet hallelujah The value we place on a gift is what determines the enjoyment we derive from the gift. Any gift you don't value, you can't enjoy. So your enjoyment of a gift depends on the value you place on that gift. Am I speaking here? There is a need of, for value. Value is honor. Your honor depends on your value. Tell somebody, the value you place on a gift is what determines the enjoyment you derive from the gift. Now, there is a little issue here. Value depends on understanding. What you don't understand, you cannot value. Your value of a gift depends on your understanding of the purpose of that gift if you don't understand why the gift was given you will abuse it where pop where purpose is not known abuse is inevitable where purpose is not understood waste is inevitable when you don't know you will abuse it when you don't understand you will waste it are you with me child of god so there are certain gifts that when we receive from God or from men, what we experience from the gift depends on the value we place on the gift. But our value that we give to the gift depends on the, on the understanding we have of the gift. Tell somebody, it is understanding that determines value. Are you with me, child of God? Now, if you study Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 9 to 11 he said when jesus christ left hell and was going back to heaven he said he gave gifts unto men he gave what he said he gave gifts unto men apostles prophet past um evangelists pastors and teachers he gave gifts so the gifts of god to men are apostles prophets evangelists and teacher which means every prophet is a gift from god to you Are you following me here? Every prophet, when you see a, I'm talking on prophet because that's what I want to talk on. Apostle is also a gift, but let me just talk on prophet. Every prophet is a gift from God to you. And your experience of the blessings that the gift brings depends on your value you place on the gift. The anointing you do not honor cannot operate in your life the anointing of God responds to honor what provoked the anointing to flow is honor that is why when you study Genesis 28 when Isaac wants to bless his children he said Esau go to the bush and hunt and bring me meat and cook that let me eat and bless you there's an issue Isaac has a wife Isaac has cattle in the house why must he ask his son to cook the principle of honor if not, he will lay his hands on Esau. Blessing will not enter. Because blessings and anointing respond to honor. Jesus in Mark chapter 6. He said, and Jesus went to his hometown. The Bible said, and he could not do any miracles. And Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor in his hometown among his relatives. So he was saying that the reason why he cannot operate miracles here is not because the anointing is lacking, it's because honor is not present. 
So even if the anointing is present and there is no honor, it cannot operate. Am I teaching here? He said, he entered there and they said, is not this the carpenter? Not even the carpenter's son. They now call him carpenter. Everywhere Jesus went, the Bible says when Jesus walked, people said that he was a mighty prophet and he entered his hometown. They said he's a carpenter. He said, and Jesus laid his hands on them and could not, the Bible says could not, could not means he tried, it did not work. And could not heal them. And could not, Bible say, he laid his hands and could not do any miracle. Bible says so. He could not do any miracle. He said, and Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. And he said, truly, a prophet is not without honor, only among his own brothers. Which means, what the, this honor is a hindrance to the flow of the anointing. That is why when the devil wants to attack your blessing, he makes you dishonor the gift of God to you. I wish you listen to me here. Tell somebody dishonor is a hindrance to the flow of the anointing. For the anointing responds to what? Honor. On that note, be careful. Listen, the greatest weapon of Satan against Christians is accusation. Why? Your value of a person depends on your love for him. When Satan brings you rumors about the man of God, you will dishonor him. And when you dishonor him, no more blessing for you. That is why the greatest attack of the devil against men of God and the church is to change your mind concerning them. You can love a man of God genuinely and that Satan sees that God wants to bless you to that man of God, he now enters your neighbor to say something about him. And a man that you used to love and appreciate, you don't want to watch even on television again. That is just a sign that there was a blessing about to come, that the devil has used the principle of dishonor to hinder your blessing. Never forget this. You cannot dishonor a prophet of God and honor another prophet of God and you think that God will bless you because the two prophets are serving the same God. So dishonor is what? A hindrance. The anointing of God does not flow where there is dishonor. You study Genesis, um, is it Mark chapter 6, you read it there. From verse 1 to 4. A prophet is not without honor among his brothers and his relatives. What was Jesus saying? He said, because they know him in the flesh, they are unable to see him by the spirit. Yes, this young man grew up with you. You know him by the flesh. But now there is an anointing upon him. But your knowledge of his flesh is hindering your sight of the spirit. And what blesses a man is not the flesh, it's the spirit. He said for the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. So there are people we cannot recognize the spiritual value they have because we have a knowledge of their flesh. So our knowledge of their flesh becomes a hindrance of our experience of the blessing they carry in their spirit. So the man of God comes to you from the place of prayer under an anointing of God and lays his hands on you and nothing happened. And you thought you had faith. No, you had faith but your knowledge of his flesh has become a hindrance. You heard what I said? Your knowledge of his flesh has become a hindrance of you experiencing the spiritual substance he carries. That's why Satan uses accusation. He uses weakness of man of God. Weakness of man of God. There is a man of God you can love. Somebody just say one, one thing. It just changed your heart. That person hates you. That person has become a channel of Satan to discourage you to receive from an anointing you love. Write this down. Take this. I love this one so much. Your knowledge of the flesh can become a hindrance of you receiving the spiritual substance in a prophet. Your knowledge of him 
by the flesh can become a hindrance of you receiving the spiritual substance in the prophet. I you put there Mark chapter 6 verse 1 to 4. He said, they said, is this not the carpenter? Yes, he might have been a carpenter but no more. Or maybe he's still a carpenter but he carries an anointing. Are you with the people of God? Someone say the prophet. Say the prophet. I'm trying to lay. I want your mind to open. If you study Matthew chapter 11, from verse 5 to 1 to maybe 11, he said, And John the Baptist's head was cut off. But before they cut his head, the Bible recorded something. He said, and John woke up and said, he called his disciples and said, go and ask Jesus if he is the Christ or should we wait for another? That is the man who testified that Jesus is the Christ. But he entered in a problem and he expected Jesus to help him, but Jesus was not instructed by God to assist him. So he, and he listened to Jesus' reply. He said, blessed is he who is not offended on account of me. There are people who are offended when man of God is preaching. They are offended. The man of God did not visit me when I was sick. No matter what happens, never allow an offense to separate you from an anointing. Never. An offense speaks of the past. An anointing speaks of your future. Even if the man of God has offended you, because he carry is a gift from God. <laughs> Our mother used to say, nobody baits the child and throw him away with the water. When a child is great, you remove the pan, you will wash it and wear it back. Are you with me, people of God? He said, blessed is he who is not offended. I thought the man of God would have called me. I didn't call you. Now you are angry. Please, I beg you in the name of the Lord. Don't be angry with a man of God. I'm not saying they are perfect or we are perfect. I'm just saying Satan will use it. I will say the next thing, they cut off the head of John. When he was offended with, his, with the prophet of God, Jesus, the, 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 the anointing that covered John left and John died like a chicken. A man that carried the anointing of Elijah that caught fire. He died because of a 14 years old girl. What was the mystery? He was still a man of prayer. He was still a man of fasting. But when bitterness have entered against the prophet, the anointing from the prophet stopped operating on him. You may ask yourself, why is my business no longer prospering? Check your heart. You may not have been offended in your mouth. Maybe you are offended in your heart. Please, I beg of you, no matter what happens, refuse to be offended with the man of God. It's like your father, your mother. No matter what your mommy calls you, no vex. <laughs> because if she curse you, it will stand. No wise child can afford to be offended with the parent, even when the parent is wrong. Because you know from scripture, it is the parents that carry the blessing that you need. Honor your father and your mother. He didn't say honor a good father, honor your father. That it may be well with you. So if you dishonor your father and your reason is that he insulted you, what shall happen to you? Listen to me. You cannot give an excuse for disobedience. If God say honor your father that you may live long and prosper and your father offends you and you get offended and you dishonor him, it is not a reason. God will not still prosper you. So if your prosperity lies in the hands of your father, do well not to be offended with him even when he's wrong. No child can stand and look at the mother and say, I don't care. You have just eaten part of your future. No child, no girl, no boy can stand before the father and mother and your parents speak and you point your hand and speak at him. You may be right that day, but tomorrow you will pay because your blessing is inside the mouth of your father. Don't be offended for your good. 
from what you know where well, I'm in church, I'm in church. You will still be in church and you'll be stranded. You will go to heaven, but you'll be poor on earth. Because you have offended. God is not a man, but God manifests himself to men through a man. So, men have ordained as channels for divine manifestation. If you despise your own channel, how shall you receive? I beg you again, no matter what happens, tell yourself, I refuse to be offended. should be your law you i will not be offended it may look as if he was wrong yes he is wrong but that man carry a blessing forget that thing and go for what he carries for you are you with me child of god so these are gifts that god has given to us the prophet is one of the gifts that god has given he sent apostles and prophets. If you study through the scripture, the prophetic office is the most exalted office. I don't really know why. It's like that. From the Old Testament to the New Testament because it is a peculiar office. But I want to explain something to you briefly that you may understand because you are you are submitting to a prophet. I'm not a pastor. I'm not an apostle. I'm a prophet. If you do not understand who I am, what is my temperament how i operate you will not experience what i carry are you understanding me it is good to know how does prophets operate let us know glory be to god god said by a prophet he delivered them from israel and by a prophet he preserved them this first of all make you understand that prophets are channels for divine manifestation by a prophet he delivered them so every time you see a prophet it's a sign that heaven has remembered you Bible says in Exodus chapter 3 he said when the people cried God said I have seen your tears I have heard your prayer I am coming down to save you and he says Moses I send you so how did God come down he put an anointing a tangible presence in Moses and delivered the people so God comes down not how we expect sometimes we pray oh god visit me we're expecting to see a wind shake or a tree begin to move or expecting to see a cloud enter our room no every prophetic visitation is a sign of divine remembrance when the prophets come it means heaven has remembered in judges chapter 6 verse 7 he said and the people cried and god sent a prophet so the response of God to the Christ of men is the release of prophet. The response of God to the Christ of men is the release of the prophet. When Moses, one man, when Moses entered Egypt, he went to Pharaoh. Let, <laughs> that's the end. Let my people go. Did Pharaoh let them go? Yes. They suffered for 430 years until the prophet came. Listen to this. The response of God to the cries of men is the release of a prophet. So if you have been crying a lot, if you have a, an encounter with the prophet, see deeper. It is a sign that the heaven has remembered you. Listen to this. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Bible says, the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Neither is favor to wise men. But time and chance happen to them all. Time and chance. <laughs> it is how when you don't place demand on encounters, your destiny cannot be fulfilled. The fulfillment of your destiny depends on what you make of encounter. It is when Samuel encountered is when David encountered prophet Samuel. His life changed. If you study first Samuel chapter 9, there was a man called Saul. Saul was, was, was a shepherd. He was keeping his father's uh, 
animals and a donkey got missing why Saul went to look for the donkey they told him there is a prophet there he said and Saul went to the prophet and said I'm looking for my father's donkey he said but when he met Samuel Samuel looked at him and said you are the king of Israel and he anointed him Saul was a king yet he was disconnected with heaven and could not fulfill his destiny but the encounter with the prophet so every prophetic encounter provokes a fulfillment of destiny destiny fulfillment depends what do you do with an encounter there are people you meet in a bus your life change but you don't take them serious they are men of god you watch on television you, i mean you watch na tv watch them your life change 2009 I was not I, was, I had backslidden from church and I was watching television watching the man of God prophet Tipu Joshua preaching as I was watching TV live and direct I saw Jesus appear in the TV then he appeared in my room there is no film read from that encounter this is the boy encounter encounter be careful when he met somewhere that was the end Aaron was was confused in life but when God sent Moses Aaron became high priest so the destiny of Aaron depended on Moses answering the call if Moses refused to be a prophet Aaron cannot be a high priest don't play with encounters don't look at men in the flesh Second, is it Second Corinthians five fourteen? He said, "We know no man according to the flesh." This is the brother that slept with me on the same bed. My sister, forget that thing. The boy and a prophet now. There is something. Even as much as the prophet needs you, you need him too. I'm not trying to exalt the prophetic ministry above Christians. No, I'm trying to explain that we are all equal before God in nature, but different in responsibility. So, a prophet is not greater than a pastor, but he's not a pastor. Let's not fight it. Let's any man they own side. No matter how strong a team is, they must play with a goalkeeper. So you cannot despise any of the ministries. Everyone has his place. Glory be to the Father. So we keep seeing from scripture that every time God wants to operate, he sends a man. He sends a man. Jesus Christ. Man, Jesus healed the sick and he said, a mighty prophet has arisen among us and God has visited his people. It means every prophet is a channel for divine visitation. Luke 7 16. They said a mighty prophet has arisen among us and God has visited his people. Some of you people pray and go to the mountain and fast. They want to see Jesus. They don't know that the prophet you left in the church is the one that God wants to visit you through. Hannah went to the temple and Hannah was praying for more than 20 years for a child and the child never came why every time Hannah went and prayed in the church she did not speak to Eli the prophet the priest he said one time she was praying and Eli came and asked her what is wrong with you and she said I'm asking God for a child he said and Eli said Eli said Eli said may the Lord do to you according to what you have asked and the next verse first Samuel 119 he said and God remembered Hannah please when did God remember her when the prophet spoke a word so every prophetic word provokes divine remembrance the next verse said, and she was pregnant it First Samuel 1 19, read from verse 11 to 19. He said, When Samuel spoke the next verse, and the Lord remembered Hannah. What provoked the remembrance? By a prophet, I deliver them. By a prophet, I preserve them. Oh God, help me. By a prophet, He helped them. You 
cannot take away man from the plan of God. No matter how spiritual you are. I don't need any man. You are foolish. You need a man. Even Jesus did not carry his cross alone. So who are you? He said, and Simon helped him carry his cross. It means none of us can carry our cross alone. We all need that man sent from God to help us carry our cross. To help you bear the burdens. And that man can be a, I pray for you. May you have an encounter with the prophet ordained for your life. Watch this. Now, I want to just show you some things about the prophet. So I said the prophet is what? A channel for what? Divine visitation. Amos chapter 7 verse 7 he said and the Lord God does nothing unless he revealed the secret unto his servant the prophet <laughs> because when the secret is revealed to the prophet the prophets prophesy and when they prophesy God operates so number two a prophet is a channel for divine manifestation when God wants to show himself in your life he gives a message to a prophet Are you listening to me here? When you study Ezekiel 37 verse 1, he said, and Ezekiel said, and the hand of God came upon me, and, and the Spirit of God carried me into a valley of what? Dry bones. He said, I was in the valley of dry bones, and suddenly the Lord said to me, Son of man, can these bones live again? And he said, Lord, only you know. And God said, Prophesy. That is why I have a problem. Because God is in the valley. Ezekiel is in the valley. Why does God not just speak to the bones himself? God turns and speaks to Ezekiel. Ezekiel speaks to the bones. Why? Because God is a spirit. God cannot effect any physical change without a physical agent. So when you are praying, my womb is blocked. God will give a prophecy to a man. I show you. He will give a prophecy to a man. And the man will prophesy. I am seeing ovarian cysts. I am seeing your tube blocked. As he's speaking, as he's speaking that word, heaven steps in and open your womb. Why? Because God speaks to the prophet. The prophet speaks to you. Am I talking to somebody here? My business, my business. God said, prophet, go today in church and prophesy prosperity in business. And the prophet comes, I prophesy, you will prosper. You don't understand that God has just answered your prayer. The answer of your prayer is that prophecy. The prophecy came because you prayed. Oh, la kraya shandi. A channel for what? To that manifestation. So if I'm expecting God to show forth in my life, I must understand that he shows us through the prophet through the words of the prophet a prophet next thing is a servant of god when he studied jeremiah chapter 44 verse 4 he said i sent to you my servant the prophet a prophet is not a servant of man he's a servant of god so although i am serving you i am not your servant there is a word that we use my prophet it's not your prophet it's a prophet of God but maybe because he's sent to you you may personalize it no prophet is your servant prophets respond to the prompting of the spirit not the needs of the people write that down a true prophet responds to the prompting of the spirit not the needs of the people because people are hungry and I'm preaching. Jesus is the bread of life. No. I will not preach it because you need it. I will preach it because he says so. That we live in a generation that people want prophets to show forth to them according to their needs. No, my brother. No, my sister. A prophet does not respond to the needs of the people. He responds to the prompting of the spirit. So, don't expect a prophet to show forth in the garment you want. <laughs> I don't know if you heard what I said. You are expecting a man to come with beard. He came with a short knicker. You are expecting him to be angry. And he's not angry. You don't expect him to be angry. He's angry. Why? He responds to the prompting of the spirit. A pastor is different because a pastor deals with men. So he has compassion. Prophets are crazy. Are you following me here? 
so crazy that most prophets spend their life on the mountain Elijah could not be with somebody he lived on the mountain because you can make him angry and you become soya just call fire and you die pastors because of, of their office and their ministry God put compassion in them but prophets God put holy anger in them because prophets they have to they have to react to evil and injustice that is why elijah could not be quiet when jezebel was killing prophets other priests could be quiet but not elijah he, there was an anger in his spirit because he is a prophet so there are times a prophet can come and he begins to preach and and the message or the tone looks very aggressive he's not aggression he's responding to the wickedness of the devil am i speaking to somebody here sit down is somebody here with me hey the prophet is not angry today the prophet may be praying and he wants to come to church and God opened his eyes and he saw wickedness or God opened his eyes and he saw the people living in sin and he just the message he planned to preach he just changed as he claimed on the altar fire comes upon him and he does not have a choice he begins to react to sin and wicked because every true prophetic anointing is not comfortable in the presence of sin pastors you can fornicate he says okay god has forgive you well when prophet catch you <laughs> because the way god has made us <laughs> No prophetic unction is comfortable in the presence of sin. Listen to this. Every prophetic unction reacts to sin and wickedness. A pastor can see wickedness and be quiet. But a prophet, something will make him talk. But even when you don't want him to talk. <laughs> it will, something will just do him. It's like a talker. It, Jeremiah said, he said, if I shut my mouth, what shall I do? For his word is like a fire in my bone. So when a, a, a Jeremiah saw people, they were living in immorality. He wants to preach God loves you, but when he comes on the altar, he will change from, if you sin, you will die. He, that is not why he wanted to preach, but the anointing carried him, because as a prophet, he must respond to sin and wickedness. Am I talking to somebody here? they are made. I want to show you how they are. So when the chauffeur does, does expect it, they must respond. Pastor, he said, no sister, it's okay. God, you are forgiven. It is true that when prophet come, he can preach and you get very angry. Why is this man preaching my life? But he has not seen you. How come he's preaching your life? Because when the anointing comes upon him, he begins to say things he does not know, but you know what he's saying. Am I talking to somebody here? And he begins to give some certain messages. And he say, I tell a certain man be see me. The man did not see you, the anointing saw you. So when you come to the church, the anointing comes on the man and he begins to react to your sin and wickedness. Am I talking to somebody here? sit down that is why you see prophets like ezekiel all the prophets when they step in a place people are they know this man when he comes he will say something because he's a fire somebody shall prophetic fire somebody shall prophetic fire he's a servant of who god not a servant of men you don't see a prophet when you want to see him you see him when God asks him to see you. Prophet, go deeper. You, we all do respect. You are not in any place to tell him how deep or how high you should go. Because he says what he sees. If he's not seeing deep, please don't ask him to go deep. What he has said is enough. That's what he saw. Your name is Mary. Prophet, go deeper. Deeper to where? Am I preaching here? Someone said the prophet. Shout prophetic fire. Shout it again. It's a servant of who? God. <laughs> there is a way we want people to preach. You can say it to a pastor. 
you can say to a prophet you will accept <laughs> when he come <laughs> the thing take him all your plans scatter you know one trouble Elijah had nobody trusted Elijah one time Elijah came and he called a prophet and said Obadiah go and tell King Ab I am here Obadiah laughed he said you before I go and tell the king and come back and the spirit of God has carried you to somewhere let me go kill him you can invite him for a program he said yes when the day come to go God said don't go the wind has carried him every true prophet is subject to the direction of the wind of God I said the wind the wind of God not the will of men Right this now every true prophet is subject to the direction of the will of God not the will of men because sometimes men's will can become a wind that will take you out of God's plan no man of God be soft be soft man he can be soft <laughs> he can be soft only when God permit him tell somebody understand tell somebody understand Hey, I love this one. The next point. Prophets. They are channels of divine revelation. One thing about the prophetic ministry is that it is the ministry that reveals and exposes. Because prophecy is a light. In 2 Peter 1 verse 19, Peter said, he said, take care that you follow the prophecy that is a light in darkness. If there is something about the prophetic ministry is that it is a light that reveals and exposes. <laughs> First Corinthians 14 from verse 25 to 28. Paul said, he said, when you come, an unbeliever comes among you and the secret of his heart are revealed. Anywhere there is prophecy, there is revelation and exposure. Plans are revealed. Sins are exposed. Am I talking here? Some say revelation. Because their eyes are open. No prophet prays for his eyes to be open. No one. God opens their eyes himself because of his assignment for them. They can pray to see clearer, but by virtue of being a prophet, the anointing opens their eye. In Numbers 24 3, he said, And Balaam said, This is the words of he whose eyes God has opened and sees vision. It shall come to pass in the last days, I shall pour my spirit on your sons and daughters, and they shall see vision and they shall prophesy. You cannot prophesy if you do not see. They shall see visions, they shall prophesy. So, prophets are agents of revelation. When things are hidden and exposed, the prophetic anointing exposes and reveals. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody had a revelation. Say it again, say revelation. One more time, revelation. One more time again, revelation. If you study 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 8 to 12, he said, there was a certain king every time he made a plan to, wanna, to attack the people of God they will catch him and the king said how come the king of Israel knows all my plan and somebody said sir it's not the king oh there is a prophet there he said the prophet tells the king even the secret you tell your wife in your bedroom so every time the king Plant a strategy how to come and defeat the people of God. Elisha, by revelation, we hear it. He said, King, don't pass like this, pass like this. So, those who despise prophecy will not enjoy divine guidance. God can direct you and guide you by the prof prophecy. Tell your neighbor if you despise prophecy, you may not enjoy divine guidance somebody here with me when well, he studied first Samuel chapter 9 verse 9 he said and they said let us go and see the seer for he that is a prophet was called a seer prophets are seers they are seers 
The anointing in them has opened their eye to see. Not to see half half, to see. When the eye is open, you cannot call blue black. You will say, I see blue and it's blue. Am I talking to somebody here? If you say there's a woman with a blue dress, her dress is blue. Her dress cannot become yellow, it is blue. Because they see and they speak. Pastors may not be like that. Listen to me. That is, <laughs> well, you get me. When, when I talk of revelation, eh, prophets are the next point. Prophets are supernatural people. I'm not trying to explain this to you so you understand. They are what? Listen. If you don't understand the supernatural, you cannot relate to a prophet. They, they don't operate in natural ways. A prophet will just step and say, Hey, remove your shoe and put it there. You say, But why? But why? But why? But why? In Hosea 12, verse 10, God said, By the prophet, I spoke to these people through parables and acts. So the prophet will just come and say, Everybody, take a while and a chief, tie your right hand. But why? Why I go with tie my hand? <laughs> they are supernatural. Don't expect them to operate the way you want. Expect them to operate the way God wants. That is what happened to a man called Naaman. Naaman came to a prophet called Elisha. And when he came, Elisha did not even see him. Elisha said, go and tell Naaman to go to River Jordan and dip himself seven times and he shall be healed. And Naaman got angry and Naaman said, are there not many rivers in my country? I thought that the man of God will just come out. He will wave his hands and I shall be healed. That is the trouble we have today. Day. Many of us are coming to the prophet, but in our mind, we have a way we want him to operate. So, when he begins to operate in a supernatural way, we get angry and we don't receive because your mind had a different way you wanted him to operate. Allow the prophet flow the way God wants him to flow. He can step into a service, say it's prophetic service, then you change. He says, No more prophetic service. Don't say he has changed it. Yes, he has changed it because heaven has changed. Supernatural. When you study Acts chapter 21 verse 10 to 12, he said, Apostle Paul came and said, he said to Paul, uh, a, a prophet called Agabus, he said to Paul, give me your belt. Paul and Apostle, but he removed the belt and gave Agabus. When, he said, when Agabus held the belt, he said, God say the Lord. It means the prophecy of Paul was dependent on his obedience to the instruction of the prophet. What did the prophet want to do with the belt? There was a prophecy, but give me your belt first. Now, it may look stupid because Paul can remove his belt and his trousers fall. If you are afraid of this grace, you can't operate with the prophet. Because we may just say something one time that will make you angry. God told Isaiah, walk, walk naked. God told Isaiah, go and marry a prostitute. God told Ezekiel, he said, eat the scripture. Prophet. Don't expect them to operate the way you want. <laughs> Somebody had a supernatural. Listen to me, see that. Supernatural. I love it. I love it. I love Elisha. There was a time that Elisha had a servant called Gehazi. When Naaman came to him and collected some came to him and received the healing. And Naaman left. He said, and Gehazi followed Naaman to collect some money from him. In 2 Kings 5, 25, 26, he said, and he collected money. When he came back, Elisha asked him, where did you go? And Gehazi said, I was in the house. And Elisha said, was my spirit not with you? He means prophets as spiritual travelers. Ezekiel said, and the hand of God carried me. That's why a prophet can stand here and say, I am your company now. I am your company. There is a dimension of prophecy where a man sees, another dimension where the man travels. <laughs> when the man sits here, I know I can be saying, I am seeing her. There was one time I was out of the country. And, and, and one of my daughters that time living in Boya she was about to have 
an intercourse with a man. And while I was, I wasn't praying for her. I was just praying for the church. As I was praying for her, God showed me a vision, and I saw how they were in the room. And all of a sudden, I don't know how it happened. Her, I just appeared and knocked her door. When she opened the door, she saw me. She said, Ah, Papa, you have come. Her, how come I was in Tanzania and I was in Boya? Somebody had a spiritual traveler. And I entered and sat down. But I don't know how you operated because according to me, I was still praying in Tanzania. But the Lord carried my spirit. That is why sometimes you see me in your dream. What is happening? Spiritual traveling. I am praying for you. I will go to your compound. I will up somebody has a spiritual traveling. That is the supernatural. One time I was praying. And God showed me a vision <laughs> of something that one of our members was about to do, which was not good. And while in my room, in seeing the vision, I shouted in my room. The person heard it in their own day. I said, Stop that! The man said, Hey, Papa! <laughs> let me not go there. Let me just let me go back here. Let me let me not talk about that party. It will confuse you. I was in my room. I was watching the vision. I said, Stop that! The man said, Hey, Papa. And the man said, Me, the man ran. The man said, Papa, I want to confess. I want to confess. I was about to do it, but I heard your voice. <laughs> I said, Small boy. I was. <laughs> Some of the spiritual traveler. <laughs> the next point prophets are heavenly intercessors. Some of the other intercessors. You study Genesis verse 20 and 7. God said, He said, Go to Abraham, for he is a prophet. He will pray for you and I will restore you. He will do what? Pray. Somebody holler, pray. Come and talk to me. Say, pray. pray. Say, pray. pray. Listen to me. A pastor can be a good pastor without prayer. But the prophetic ministry depends on prayer. You must pray. You cannot come and do kalulu kalala. You must pray. You see, Abraham shall pray. When you study Amos chapter 7, Amos said, I was praying, and the Lord showed me a fire that devoured the land. And I said, Oh God don't send it. He said, and God stopped it. Three times, God showed Amos revelation how you will destroy the land. But because Amos prayed, it did not come to pass. Intercessors. Every true prophet, every time he's praying, God will begin to bring in pictures of people. There are certain things that do not happen in your life because a prophet is praying. Huh? Because he's an intercessor. Heaven has ordained them so heaven listens to the voice. Huh? When the prophet lifts his voice on your behalf, huh? heaven begins to move for you huh? because the prophetic office is ordained as that of an intercessor. That is why when you study in First Kings chapter 17, huh? no, ch chapter 17, yes, when, a, when the widow's child died, huh? he said, and Elijah came and carried the child and he prayed. He said, and God heard his voice and restored the child's life. Notice, God heard his voice. God heard his voice and restored. Oh God, hear my voice. God heard his voice. It means if, if I am a prophet of God, every time I pray for you, God hears my voice and things begin to happen in your life. He said, A woman shall die. And as Elijah was in the house, he said, Elijah prayed. And God heard his voice. Why? Because a prophet is an intercessor in Exodus chapter 17. He said Joshua went to war and Joshua was fighting the war. He said Moses stood at the top of the mountain and he lifted his both hands to God. He said when the hands of Moses were lifted up Joshua was winning the war. When his hands came down Joshua lost the war. So the victory of a Christian does not depend on his wisdom or strategy. It depends on the intercession of his prophet. Because Moses was praying. Bible says, I want all men to lift up holy hands in prayer. In Psalms 141, David said, He said, Let the lifting of my hands be like the evening.
willing sacrifice. So when an intercessor lifts his hands to God, God begins to walk on behalf of the people. That is why every true prophet must pray. He must pray. Because heaven depends on your prayer to act in the lives of the people. When the prophet are quiet, heaven will be silent. Prophet say something. Somebody had a prayer. Somebody say prayer. prayer. Can you talk to me? Say prayer. prayer. Say prayer. prayer. One more time again. Prayer. prayer. One more time again. Prayer. prayer. Moses prayed. Joshua one. The difference between Peter and Judas is the prayer of Jesus. Because Jesus prophesied to two people. He prophesied to Judas and Peter. He said, Judas, he said, somebody will betray me here. And they said, who is it? He said, the one that dipped his hand with me in the bowl. He said, and Judas dipped his hand and asked the Lord, is it I? And Jesus said, it is you. Direct, accurate prophecy. And Jesus turned and said, this night, all of you have abandoned me. And Peter said, even if everybody go, I can't go. And Jesus turned and looked at Peter and not that prophet. He said, I prophesy, Peter. This night, you will deny me. So Jesus prophesied to Judas. He prophesied to Peter. And Judas betrayed Jesus. And Peter denied Jesus. But how come after Judas betrayed, he committed suicide? But Peter repented. This is the difference. Jesus said, Judas, you are here to betray me go and do what you want to do but when he came to Peter he said Peter yes you will betray me but I have prayed for you I have prayed for your marriage I have prayed for your family I have prayed for your brother you will not bury somebody in untimely death I have prayed for your business your business will not collapse I have prayed for your marriage your marriage cannot be broken I have prayed for your children the devil cannot kill them you don't serve a dead God you serve a mighty God it's the same yesterday it's the same today it's the same forever when God say yes no man can say no when God lifts you up no man can bring you down God is on your side power is on your side grace is on your side lift your hands say yes Lord yes Lord I have prayed for you Jesus said, I may not have prayed for Judas, but I have prayed for you. He said, Peter, even though you deny me, you go come back. I have prayed for you. My prayer is stronger than your unbelief. I have prayed for you. No matter how the shaking comes in your marriage, understand that I have prayed for you. No matter what happens in your business, I have prayed for you. No matter the medical report, I have prayed for you. As long as the hands of Moses were lifted up, he said the people won in the war. I have prayed for you in every battle you were facing. God will give you victory. Amen. Lift your hands, shout, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sit down. I have prayed. Let the witch doctor curse you. I have prayed. Yes. Let them say what they want to say. Sometimes in life, when things go hard, just say, Man of God, please, I hope you are praying for me. I don't like this arrogant generation that are despising the office of a man of God. All of us, we are Christians. All of us, we can pray. Yes, all of us, we are Christians. But there's a barber that still shave your hair, there is a driver that still drive you. Why, is, if you have the Holy Spirit, why don't you shave your hair? Why don't you drive yourself? If you can still respect unbelievers, why not a man of God? There is somebody God has placed in your life. Don't despise the prophet. Yes, the Holy Spirit has not come to replace the prophetic office. Yes, you have the Holy Spirit. Yes, you also need a prophet. That is why God sent me. I prophesy in the name of Yahweh. You will see the power of God. You will see the glory of God. You will see the favor of God. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! Sit down. Can I move on? The next point 
is that prophets are ordained as interpreters of signs of the time in Daniel chapter 9 verse 1 he said Daniel said I understood by the books that the captivity of Israel must last for 70 years some say interpreters prophets are interpreters of the signs of the time if you don't know the signs of the time you can't know the demands of the season in John chapter 5, he said, in Bethesda, there was a pool. Somebody had a pool. He said, at a certain time, an angel stepped down from there and stirred the water. He said, whoever stepped in was healed. But let me make you understand. You cannot step into the water unless you know that it has been stirred. So there are certain things that happen in the spirit that you cannot see or know. When the prophet begins to pray, God begins to show him a revelation. So when he steps to church, he begins to interpret the signs of the time. He will tell you the rainbow you saw yesterday. Huh? This is the meaning of the rainbow. Huh? And because of this, it gives an instruction. Huh? So many people are not experiencing God huh? because they don't understand the time they are living in. Huh? If mango season come, huh? everybody will go to mango tree. Huh? So, but if the mango season come and you don't know it is the season, you will still be begging for mango. Although it's available. What you experience depends on, on what has been interpreted. When Pharaoh had a dream, Pharaoh did not want his dream to be translated. He wanted it to be interpreted. There is a difference between translation and interpretation. To interpret means to give the meaning that is hidden in the message. Am I speaking to somebody here? That is why you can see a dream and you come to a prophet. As he begins to pray for you, God opens his eye and he gives you the interpretation of the dream there is a vision you have there is a revelation you have i am here to prophesy by the anointing of yahweh you will know the meaning you will understand the vision you will understand the purpose i prophesy you shall not be frustrated you will not go astray lift your eyes shut open my eye lord He said, and the children was reading the Bible. He said, and Philip asked him, do you understand what you read? So reading is not understanding. Do you, you don't dream, you understand the meaning for the dream. Let me tell you this today. Most of the things that have happened to us, God wants us in a dream. We didn't understand. So you need that man that God has placed over you with an anointing that when he teaches understanding comes uh, that you can have a dream and he said this is what it means uh, because your destiny depends on who interprets your dream if Joseph did not interpret that Pharaoh's dream well the woman for die many of us have gone astray because we carried our dreams to wrong people and they gave us a wrong interpretation we have gone astray so many people are angry today with their lives there are certain things God showed you but you were so immature you didn't know now you are saying ah and something be tell me ah and I be know but when there is a prophet over your life somebody say I am prophetic somebody say I am prophetic somebody say I am prophetic when you walk with a prophet you don't become a prophet you become prophetic I prophesy you cannot be blind again you hey. cannot be deaf again hey, your spiritual eye is open hey, your spiritual eye is open hey, you your answer I am prophetic I am prophetic sit down you are prophetic things cannot you are prophetic I said when you walk with a prophet you may not become a prophet but you must become prophetic how many of you have realized some certain things you are seeing in your dream? Because you have become what? Prophet. Tell your neighbor when you walk with the prophet. You may not become a prophet. But you must become prophetic. Lift your hands, shut, I am prophetic. Wait, do you know what it means to be prophetic? You can just wake up in the morning one day and, and you check your bank account and there is no money. But because you are prophetic, you prophesy to your account. Before Friday, there must be money here. 
do you know what it means to be prophetic you can stand before the mirror and you look at your finger you say i prophesy to you finger before this time next year there must be a wedding ring on you do you know what it means to be prophetic you can stand before the mirror and you look at your stomach you say i prophesy to you stomach because i am prophetic you will carry a baby you may not need a prophet to prophesy all the time because you are prophetic in the last days i shall pour my spirit on your sons not on his sons on my sons i prophesy from today your spiritual eye is open from today your spiritual ear is open shut i am prophetic i am prophetic and thou shall decree a thing and it shall be somebody hello i am prophetic i am prophetic say never never give me space i'm prophetic give me space i'm prophetic see that listen to me when i am a shia go when when you are prophetic you begin to operate in a realm that your family does not understand Bible said there was a man called Philip. Philip was walking on the road and the spirit told him, go and preach to a man. He said, when Philip preached to the man, he said, when Philip preached to the man and he baptized the man, he said, when the man was inside water, before he lifted his head, he said, Philip had vanished. What am I trying to say? Nobody can take a charm and measure my name. You, you can put a trap for me but before you see I have vanished. Tell your neighbor, hold me, I go vanish. Tell your neighbor, hold me, hold me, hold me. I go vanish. Can I prophesy? No demonic trap can catch you. No satanic power can hold you. Amen. Never hold me, I go vanish. Never hold me, I go vanish. Hey! Hey! Listen, he said, I have a shot. He said, Philip baptized a man. When the man put his head up, he said, Philip was not there. Huh? They are certain wicked men huh, that they have tied a picture, tied you somewhere. Huh, and they think they have kept you. Huh, they don't know you are prophetic. Huh. Before they go back to check, you are vanished. Huh. Might be they carry your hair. Huh. Might be they carry your nail. Huh. Might be somebody hell I'll go vanish. I go vanish. Hey! 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 Neighbor! Neighbor! Romeo! Romeo! I go vanish! I go vanish! somebody say i'm prophetic when when you are prophetic you can just wake up in the morning and you have a headache when you are prophetic you do not cry you speak to the headache because the strength of prophecy is your word but because you are prophetic we do not complain if your head pains you you say hey head listen to the voice of god peace in my head you are prophetic speak peace in your marriage you are prophetic speak peace in your business because you are prophetic if you are prophetic you are supernatural that is why philip disappeared jesus said he that is born of god is like the wind the wind blow where it wants i have not seen no physicist that can capture the wind no matter the science you know no matter the physics you know you cannot capture the wind and jesus said you are like the wind there is no witchcraft there is no necromancer there is no herbalist there is no witch doctor there is no money there is no tiny there is no power of satan that can hold your life you are like the wind when they think they catch you you go vanish you don't shout i am prophetic i am prophetic see that <laughs> lastly let me finish Every prophet carry a reward. Matthew 10 41. He said, He that received a prophet, not in the name of an evangelist. Because you can receive a prophet like a pastor. He that received a prophet 
in the name of a prophet there is time to see him as papa there is a time to see him as prophet prophet there are some challenges you enter don't call for papa call for prophet you may be my father but you are a prophet i don't want to speak to the father in you i want to speak to the prophet in you he said he that believeth and receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive the reward so there is a reward what is the reward prosperity believe in the lord your god you shall be established believe in his prophet you shall prosper we are not just speaking of money we are speaking of influence we are speaking of growth we are speaking of increase you shall prosper Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 he said and the people built and they prospered by the prophesying of Haggai the prophet they did not prosper by their wisdom they did not prosper by their strength they prospered by their prophesying and it shall be said of you that the people of AGM, the partners of AGM, hey! prospered by the prophesying of Kevin the prophet. Amen. I prophesy I receive that today, whatever you touch will prosper. Amen. That today, whatever you go, take over. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down. Let me say this because it's time to pray for you your experience of the reward of a prophet this depends on your response to the prophet so he can carry something because he did not respond you will not have it your response your response prophets are not magicians every prophecy gives you a responsibility something the way you must do he that received a prophet and Jesus said if you give a cup of cold water you cannot experience I, let me repeat again your, you, your experience of the reward of a prophet depends on your response to the prophet people of God if you complain about your prophet you close the heaven above your head no man should complain about his wife I would say if you do that your prayers will be hindered no wife should complain about her husband because her husband is her head if not her, her heavens will be closed and no person should complain about your man of God even when you don't understand be quiet tell your neighbor your dialect shut your mouth in your dialect cut into look at never say never Captain Chu. But don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that because a man is a prophet, he can live the way he likes and do the things he likes. Every prophet will be judged by God. He said, We used to prophesy in your name. He said, Depart from me, I know you not. The judgment of prophet is not in the hands of men, it's in the hands of Jehovah. So let the prophet be lying. Don't talk. Leave it. God will judge him. If a prophet does you harm, the best you can do is to pray and report him to God. God will handle him. Don't talk. Don't complain. Don't go about calling his name to people. Because when you do that, he said, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. He didn't say, touch not my prophet. Do my prophets no harm. You can do him harm by gossiping. You can do him harm by accusation. He said, do not do that. There is no reason to do it. No matter what happens, understand this today. That every prophet shall be judged by God. When he studied 1 Kings 13, there was a prophet that God sent. He did not obey God's instruction. He said, God sent a lion to kill him. God knows how to handle his servants. You, be quiet. In the counsel of God, you are not one of the shareholders. Are you a shareholder there? So when God begins to deal with his servants, he doesn't ask your opinion. They are never, you are not a shareholder. 
Someone say respond. So how do you respond to the prophet? Simple. Simple. Honor him. That's all. Honor. Honor. How do you honor? Number one. Obedience. A man you do not obey, you do not honor. The first expression of honor is what? Obedience. Listen, prophets are men of instruction. It may not say all of you stand up and carry your chair. If you can't do it, you can't honor him. Zaki Shapra Laki. Somebody say obedience. Obedience. If you can't obey the instruction, you can't enjoy the blessing. He said, Naman, deep yourself. Naman began to argue. Okay, don't deep yourself. Let's see what will happen. Somebody say honor. Say it again. Honor. One more time. Honor. The second way is by sacrifice. Give to every man of God. Yes. Give to the prophet. Jesus said, one of the ways of honor, Proverbs 39, he said, honor the Lord with your substance. A person you cannot give to, you don't truly value. Honor is not a confession. It's an expression. Honor is expressed what? Obedience and what? Sacrifice. When Abraham met Melchizedek, he gave to him. The time that Saul wanted to go and see someone, he said, what gift shall we bring to him? For we can't go and see the prophet empty-handed. Why did they reason like that? It's not the gift that provoked the prophecy. The gift is simply an expression of your honor. Those who honor beer spend much of their money on beer. Where a man's treasure is, there shall his heart be. Which means that one way to measure value is money. When you value yourself, you keep buying more mesh and more things for you. When you value God, you help offers, you help church. Whatever you value is what you give to. Rise on your feet.